In late December 2019, 25-year-old Connor Reed, and I'll, I'll show you a picture of Connor Reed just so you can get an idea of, of what he looks like. Can you see that through the camera? Yeah, yeah, like beautiful. Connor. Yeah, he's, he's he's that kind of guy. Um, he'd the be trick when you're showing the photos to keep it moving. Why? <laughs> what you got a problem with that? All right, I'll show you. I'll show you a better photo later. But anyway, um, in late 2019, he'd been living in the Chinese city of Wuhan for three years teaching English. But Wuhan, like, never heard of that. Never heard of it. No, indeed. But like many people uh, in the city at the time, he developed a bad cough and started struggling to breathe. He was quickly hospitalised by the Chinese authorities, but things got pretty bad. As he told um, the UK newspaper The Sun a little bit later, I thought I was going to die. But um, as you can guess, uh, Connor was one of the f- earliest people and probably, and probably the first UK citizen to be diagnosed with the coronavirus that we've come to know as COVID-19. But The interesting thing about Connor is that he didn't want to do what the Chinese uh, doctors told him to. He refused to take their antibiotics. Instead, he relied on an inhaler. I don't know what the inhaler was for. I assume it's Ventolin or something like that. No, I'm going to go with a spray paint in a plastic bag. Yeah, probably his chroming. Um, uh, Instead, and drank a hot whiskey with honey until that ran out. I'm drinking that now. (laughs) It's 11 o'clock, fuck it. (laughs) It's an old-fashioned remedy, but it seemed to do the trick, he told the son. I am proof that the coronavirus can be beaten. So after two weeks in hospital, uh, Connor was finally discharged and only later learned that he had actually been diagnosed with coronavirus um, that has now sickened more than 2 million people. Now, Connor's story uh, was told to the Sun newspaper on February the 3rd, and it went viral. Um, and it was translated into different languages around the world, and in particular, Farsi. Um, in late March, reports. I actually speak Farsi fluently. If you want me to, you know, read any of the original, just can you give us can, me. can you give us hot whiskey and honey in Farsi? Uh, in late March, reports came out of some pretty horrific consequences. So there's a story. This is in the New York Daily News by Nasser Karimi and John Gambrell. Standing over the still body of an intubated five-year-old wearing nothing but plastic, but a plastic diaper, an Iranian healthcare worker in a hazmat suit and mask begged the public for just one thing, stop drinking industrial alcohol over fears about the new coronav- coronavirus. The boy, now blind after his parents gave him toxic methanol in the mistaken belief it protects against the virus, is just one of hundreds of victims of an epidemic inside the pandemic now gripping Iran. So Iranian media at that point said that more than 300 people had been killed and probably more than 1,000 sickened by drinking industrial alcohol throughout Iran. Um, Iran, obviously, alcohol is banned and people that are drinking it are relying on bootleggers. And the bootleggers don't have a lot of quality control, so they're adding bleach, they're adding all sorts of other chemicals to make it drinkable or look like it's going there. So why did people do this? Well, it was Connor's story. Messages, okay, messages forward and forwarded all over the world in social media accounts and in Farsi in Iran falsely suggested that a British school teacher had, and others had cured themselves of the coronavirus with whiskey and honey based on that tabloid story. So translate drink liniment. Connor's story of surviving the whiskey and honey remedy was directly cited. Welcome to The Wholesome Show, the science podcast that won't kill you if you share it for people who sit up the back of the classroom. Did you as long as you don't buy the bootleg version. Yeah. Because that shit's toxic. The one with bleach, the bleach version. Don't buy that either. Wholesome and bleach, not so wholesome. And don't inhale it. I'm Will Grant. I'm Dr. Roderick Griffin Lamberts, and I too am drinking whiskey to make myself immune to all known diseases. And we are joined today by... Darren Saunders, and I am sans coffee yet for the morning, so this could go really pear-shaped. Can I say, introducing Daz here, I'm very excited to have not one but two of my mentees on the show at last. I mean, it's been great just having Will on, but as a mentor, (laughs) having the two of you here, it's very exciting for me. I feel like a parental glow. I didn't know, Darren, that you were you were one of Rod's mentees. I'm going to claim that. I'm going to claim that. I noticed his his ears suddenly got closer to the edges of the frame as he was saying that. I know. (laughs) Yeah, my camera's falling away from me. 
The Wholesome Show is brought to you by the Australian National Centre for the Public Awareness of Science. Whether they want to or not. <laughs> yeah. And what we do here is we ask the uh, ridiculous, unfortunate, unnecessary questions that you never did so that, um, well, I suppose, we can enjoy ourselves, really. Isn't that the idea, William? It is, and it's so that um, Darren can soil himself because Darren is... <laughs> Darren is an excellent, uh, one of Australia's most high-profile science communicators, pri- prize-winning science communicator, and he does the television and stuff like that. And this is the this moment. Point. This is the moment where he's ruined his career. <laughs> no, this is the, you're going to get the wholesome bump after this, and the bump basically is also translated as kick to the curb. I've but been, you'll be fine. I've been waiting for two years for this, for this invitation. <laughs> and then you kept us waiting. God, you're just And I was told tired. there'd be beer involved. And here we are doing it at 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning. What's going on? There, there can be beer. There would have been beer, but <laughs> anyway, anyway. Because of you egghead experts, we're not allowed to be near each other because fascism. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, look, you can guess. We're going to talk a little bit about, again, the thing about why we can't be near each other. But there's a particular bit that I want to explore that I've seen uh, Darren whinging about on Twitter, and I know you've whinged about before, Rod, and I've certainly whinged as well. Um, I'll tell you a story, but it's a story that I want you two to join in because I know that I can't capture all of this, and I'll tell you more. So So we're going to join in. Is this going to be one word each in a round? Is that how we're going to do this? Yeah, it's like high school speech and drama. Oh, I never did that. Am so. I had friends, I think, so I didn't do speech and drama. I didn't do speech and drama either, but I. I'll leave you secret, did. neither did I. You so did, Will. Yeah, he did. I, I totally did. I totally <laughs> Look at did. your haircut. I, <laughs> you know, you know, he was a school captain, right? And I got expelled. So, like, like who's the cooler kid here? Yeah. We're going to call the podcast the suck up and the fuck up, but it was already taken. <laughs> I didn't know this was a speech and drama haircut. <laughs> now, that's finally the sledge that might get me. <laughs> <laughs> On February the 15th, uh, so six weeks ago, no, eight weeks ago as we were recording this, about a month before COVID-19 would be declared a pandemic, uh, WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus announced to the world, we're not just fighting an epidemic, we're fighting an infodemic. He made up a new word there. I don't know if it was he had made it up, but it was the first time it had been said broadly like that. With that, they declared that the global epidemic of misinformation spreading rapidly through social media platforms and other outlets. It's outlets. sexist. It could be Mr. Information too, just throwing it out there. That's true. Ms. No, I know. Ms. Ms. Information That's uh, posed a significant problem for public health. So Sylvie Briand, she's the Director of Infectious Hazards Management at the WHO's health emergencies program and architect of the strategy to try and counteract counteract this infodemic risk, told The Lancet, we know that every outbreak will be accompanied by a kind of tsunami of information. But also within this information, you always have misinformation, rumours. We know that even in the Middle Ages, there was this phenomenon. So a couple of weeks ago, I told you a little bit about this, Rod, when I was talking about the Spanish flu. I told you a little bit about the snake oil and the remedies that were coming. I remember around. bits. I did doze off for a while, but that you know, it, it'd have been a big day. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I I, I told you. I I wasn't expecting you did tell me, you, yeah. that there was no test after. Um, they surround all epidemics and all pandemics. But today, I want to dive into the particular stuff that I'm seeing here um, in terms of misinformation that's flooding around around COVID. Because I think it's interesting to try and document. Okay, what are the sorts of things that people are throwing around? Now I've spent quite some time digging into this and trying to find a whole bunch of different stories of um, different sorts of misinformation, but I know that I cannot do justice to all of it. I can well, that's because you're doing it all after hours because you have a day job, if anyone's listening, and there's no way you'd let it encroach on work time. So there's only so much time you have. No, I just think it's just that big. I just think it's that big that. that there are so many bits to this. So listener, um, throw in later if there's other wacky bits of misinformation, wacky and horrible, obviously. Um, oh yeah, we need horror. Hilarious is good. But Rod, Darren, dive in with other bits of misinformation, except the stuff that Darren's not allowed to talk about due to um, secret other business reasons. <laughs> uh, uh, look, my absolute favourite is the Pete Evans uh, energy. Oh, we, we're getting to that one. We're getting oh, good. We, good. We, okay, we, are, we, are get, we, we will get to that baby because that is the most beautiful thing of all. Um, I've tried to categorise them a little bit to try and get a feel for when things were happening and what things were happening. But I want to get is a- it on a scale from uh, to total fuckwit. Is that basically the and in the middle is fairly shit? Like what, what's the scale? Well, I, I, okay, the scale of of killing three hundred people is probably the high end. Yeah. Um, mm. The scale of 
I don't know. You got to give a scale throughout. I, you, you decide if this is five star misinformation or one star misinformation. I um, do have to ask though, like from the opening tale, the the people who are drinking uh, industrial strength alcohol in a country where alcohol is illegal or isn't? Did you say? No, it's illegal. It's illegal. Not allowed. Okay. So I was going to say they should know better, but maybe they don't. Because if someone was doing that here, it's like, why do you think if you have a disease, it wouldn't kill you when you know it would kill you otherwise? Uh, that's one of my favourites. Like, I'm going to drink bleach now. It's like, you, you know that was shit the whole time. Yeah, but people – well, look, that's one of the things I want to get to towards the end of this as well. Why, yeah, why I'll would take people, it all back. I'll say it again later. Why, no, why would people get to a point of going, okay, I am going to drink something that is um, – either bleach, which is, is ridiculous, or industrial alcohol, which is ridiculous, but also prescribed by my religion or something like that. Why would I get to that point all of a sudden? And I think I think that's that's what we have to attempt to diagnose here. But I don't want to do that yet. I want to go through some of the yeah. stories, some of the stories. So rumors and info misinformation started straight away with this pandemic. It's um Almost as soon as as soon as it started happening in China, uh, rumors were all over the place and and flooding around. So um, uh, as soon as um, early January, when we started to hear stories from the rest of the world um, about this, then we were um, seeing things from China that were really quite oh, um, stories early in January that there was already one hundred and twelve thousand people dead um, in uh, in China that uh, people were dying on the streets and there were parents abandoning sick kids in airports and flying away amid the outbreak, which, you know. Abandoning them in airports? Yeah, there's this. Is that a cure? Wild. There's, I, I never heard that as a cure, though. I didn't realise that was a, a solution. Not, not on the list, no. That's more the Dr. Nick Riviera end of cures. <laughs> well, it's, if it's he's a, not alive, he can't be sick anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So it was a, it was a, I mean, this is a little bit like the children overboard sort of thing um, that happened here in Australia, you know, 20 is it, years Were they ago. trying to come here? Well, no, this is, this is, there's probably a whole lot of racism that was fueling this. People saying, oh, the, the Chinese people are not handling this well and also being potentially terrible parents. But there was a photo that went around. I don't have the photo here right now um, of um, airports that are um, you know, like a, a, a rival gate or something like that, just full of children. Uh, and they're, they're lined up and, and people are saying, oh, this is evidence of children being left in airports. Parents have flown away to a safe city and they're just abandoning or their Or the arrival hall as the Wiggles were coming to town. Uh, I mean, you know, without <laughs> yeah, context. Yeah. yeah, exactly, without context. <coughs> Call me old-fashioned. Or or a school trip or something like that. And yeah. and remember, there's no dates on, on these photos. So here's a school trip. And, and if you're taking a bunch of school children on a camp to another part of China, I'm sure you want them to line up. You do the buddy system, holding hands or something like that. Kind of cool that they you look- staple every two kid together, like, like just to be that sure. That totally works. That's a totally uh, effective mechanism for keeping kids together. <laughs> Staples. <laughs> yeah. This is a medically endorsed opinion. No, absolutely not. Nothing I say is medically endorsed. <laughs> that, which is good because everything I say is. So we can balance each other out. So there were other other rumors coming from China at a similar sort of time that I'll come back to later. But the next next sort of phase of rumors that. Actually, it's kind of interesting because they kind of maybe came true a little bit. Uh, early rum- rumours in February when you get people around the world who are saying things like, oh, lockdown is coming, quarantine is coming, this is, yeah. this is all going to go crazy. Now, um, a lot of, there's a lot of this um, debunking stuff that happened around the same sort of time saying, no, no, calm down, we're not going to – and, you know, look where we are right now. So the world did get to a place where, okay it's – not, It's not a lockdown? We're not in lockdown? No, we're not in lockdown, but many countries are. And and telling people to calm down always works. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. you know, <laughs> fact. Yeah. You seem yeah. to be freaking out. Calm the fuck down. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's like a breath of fresh air. Opening a window and a foot I massage. Feel I feel already. so much better. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> Cheers. I think don't panic is the best lesson. <laughs> Isn't it? So um, the, the thing you could see from this sort of era is a whole bunch of, um, they'd be like text messages, um, but they've got this thread of forward, 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 or like from a friend, from a trusted friend or something like that. So they're, uh-huh. they're, they're all nested in the way that the, the message is down the bottom, but there's a whole chunk of, um, of bits up the top. So here's one here. Um, I'll, re- I'll read this out. This is the exact tes- text message that was forwarded. Here's the intel. My friend sent me this. Message from a friend of mine. We should stock foods for two weeks. 
from a trusted source of mine, from a trusted friend, connect, it gets to the real story in a second, uh, connected to the UN in New York, please be advised, within 48 to 72 hours, the president will evoke what is called the Stafford Act. Just got off my phone with some of the military friends up in DC who just got out of a two-hour briefing. The president will order a two-week mandatory quarantine for the nation. Stock up on whatever you, you guys need to make sure you have two-week supply of everything. Please forward to your network. So you can understand that many elements of that did and didn't happen. There was a lot of panicking based on that. Um, Two weeks supply of everything is quite a broad call too. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, that doesn't necessarily only mean food. Well, if you want it during that two weeks, you got to get it. That's what they're saying. Wow. Just think of, think of your next you know, two I was, weeks. I was getting emails like that. With, with, you know, there's a doctor at Johns Hopkins who, who said this, and straight away when it's not spelt properly because it's Johns Hopkins, yeah. right? and straight away when it's John Hopkins, you know that it's, you know, red flag straight off the bat. Or John's with an but apostrophe. Hang on, where are you getting these from? Are you getting these from August? Family, other- family members and such things, you know? Trusted family member. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anonymous yeah. source, my cousin called Steve. Yeah, see, one of the things is, um, one of the interesting things we'll come to later as well, is that... Um, your own social networks, uh, no, no social network is immune to this. And there is no a, houses. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. No, we got the I, best networks, beautiful networks. <laughs> without, without preempting this discussion in any way, I, I want to raise a red flag here that scientists have been some of the worst purveyors of bullshit in this entire exercise. Indeed. How indeed. Bloody dare you. <laughs> He's going to lose is his a science, science communication life. Frotting license. podcast, Darren. <laughs> This is how you're going to treat us. <laughs> no, but this is this this parallels a lot. Like um, some of the research that says the most likely people to join cults are people who are highly intelligent, but also value their um, their intelligence and think they are uh, superior to other people. I would say that probably a lot of people that might panic in a panic buying scenario, it doesn't skew necessarily um, to people of lower intelligence. Can you run that by me again? Who's most likely to join a cult? Because I'm feeling pretty vulnerable right now. (laughs) (laughs) Smart people. It's smart people who have a a little superiority conflicts, but also some anxieties. Ah, fuck. Am I in a cult now? (laughs) If you want to be. Judging by what you're currently wearing, you may be leading a cult. (laughs) This is this is uh, yeah what most cult members in the senior echelon do wear at the moment. At least at the Sunday cult of crutch. So, oh, we're recording visually, aren't we? Hang on, just for the for the cameras. Then it's beautiful. You got, you've stocked I'm up on Kool Aid, haven't you, Rod? Sorry, <laughs> you've stocked up on Kool Aid, haven't you, mate? Oh, I'm never, I'm never down to under them less than five liters. <laughs> So at the same sort of time, and um, remember, this is, we're recording in April, but this is um, rumours that are happening in early March sort of periods, um, uh, before lockdown scenarios had happened in many, many different countries. Um, people are flooding with social media, all sorts of images as well, um, saying that the military is about to put us into lockdown. So what they were doing, what a lot of the pictures- This is what globally, or this is the US in particular? Uh, I've, I've, uh, I, I couldn't say globally, but guaranteed I've got um, stories from the UK, the US, the Netherlands, uh, Canada. Um, so I, I would I would be surprised right. if it wasn't going nearly everywhere. Um, yeah. Quite often, what people are doing is there's simple versions of this. There's pictures of soldiers, um, uniformed soldiers, like marching a whole bunch of them walking in the streets, saying Clapham Junction now. They're locking us down by stealth, uh, putting all the pieces in place, then lock it down. Uh, tanks on the motorway last night under cover of darkness. On the motorway. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so, wow. so these are, look, these are photos that are taken out of context. So it might be a photo from a totally different time or a moment when tanks on the motorway happen, when you're moving a whole bunch of, uh, troops for a, an exercise or something like that. So my were, favorite is that the ones that really freaked me out, there were images in from China. You can tell cause they look Chinese, uh, people in scrubs walking around with, um, automatic weapons yes. early in the piece. I remember that wow. one flying. Yeah. Uh, and I, that flew I, around I, our office. I sent that to you. And that's, that's where it came from. And, a and, credible and source. And thinking now, I'm like, was that real or not? I, 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 I don't know if that was, but it certainly you're added to cult. my fear. <laughs> Welcome. Did Darren this, send it to me? Is this an intervention? Is this is what I'm supposed to be doing here. <laughs> no, it's <this is> an <laughs> absorption. <laughs> But a lot of those were um, were just taken completely out of context. So there was, you know, the uh, a whole line of tanks on the motorway because they're moving to an exercise, or they're moving from one tank house to another. Wherever you keep your tanks, got to move them around occasionally or something like that. Yeah. Otherwise, um, they they seize up. You need to, you know, run some juice through the old uh, pistons. 
Oh, coffee delivery. Yeah. Or or there were there were a whole bunch of people that were diving in and making things a little bit worse. So there's there's some fake images from that time of army trucks where someone has photoshopped over on the side COVID-19 quarantine team. So oh, yeah. Guaranteed. Murder force. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, murder force. <laughs> Round them up and shoot them out. Yeah. Uh. So, so there's um, there's scales of different sorts of misinformation. Some some is people just um, deliberately think, taking things out of context. Some is is making new stuff that will is actually not true at all. People are very happy to share that, but once it gets started, people will send that on all over the place. Surely most of it is, yeah, just people going, holy shit, why would I not believe it? Because, you know, credible source said and freaking out. Oh, and some of it's clearly political, right? I mean, yeah. you know, there's clear geopolitical games being played behind a lot of this stuff. Is there, Darren? What? Oh, definitely. Oh, no. Definitely. I've seen How the memos. Know? I've seen the memos. You've seen the secret and the non-secret. Yeah, yeah someone has sourced deep inside the Kremlin sent me one. Well, okay, so that's we've that's, all been deep inside the Kremlin. Though. This is this is one of the first things um, that really got going. Uh, once people started thinking, yeah, this this pandemic or at the time an epidemic is is bad and it's probably going to go a long way. Where mm. the virus came from? Now, obviously, uh, everything centers on Wuhan, um, but there's a there has been a lot of mm, debate in the weirdo circles of the internet uh, as to whether the virus was. Uh, nature or mm. nurture. So a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> no, nurture's a, we nurtured this virus. We, we gently coaxed it. Yeah. <laughs> a virus we gave it encouragement when it got more lethal and we called no naughty bad virus when it became more benign and we, we, we nudged it. So there are dozens of stories, dozens of stories about the virus being man-made and you would have seen this over and over and over again. Uh, because there is a, a lab in Wuhan, that's a virology lab that supposedly would have the capabilities to do this, it's only 25 miles away from the wet market, so potentially uh, that could be it. Um, that, was, that, was um, also fueled, that was also fueled by a preprint from some low undergraduate level uh, genetic analysis of the sequence of the virus, right? Is this the one where they were saying it looks a little bit really? like, H like HIV? HIV? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what they, what they, they'd done their genomic analysis completely wrong, which most undergrad genetic students could have told you they'd done wrong <laughs> and found bits of, you know, the vectors that they used to do the sequencing and stuff and went, Oh, see, it's man-made. And so that kicked, that's, you know, kicked that along. There's actually a really interesting story in this that, um, that, Preprints to for people oh, out, yeah. outside of the science are, are a place where we can share scientific ideas before they've gone through all the peer review. And in normal times, all cool. Yeah, you know, that's that's really good. And if you're not really meant to be read outside of science, no. And and if it's like you know theories about what happens at the edge of a black hole or whatever, it doesn't really matter. But but stuff that is an evolving live on the ground emergency, sharing potentially uh, rumor driving. Um, problems or or ways of looking at it. It's a big danger. So there was, I think there's something that's saying a lot of these preprints, so it's um, uh, BioArchive and MedArchive have yep. had like a hundred times the traffic um, in the last yep. in the last well, month compared with ever before. And the what else are you going to do? You can go to the footy or you can read biological and medical true. preprints. That's probably... I think, I think this is a good thing. I think people are getting <laughs> more involved in the intellectual community. Maybe the they'll science. cure cancer at the time. Maybe they'll oh, they'll come yeah. they'll well, come for the someone has to does ain't doing it. We've been dealing with this in cancer for a while now. This is, you know, it's uh this sort of <laughs> shenanigans has been going on for a long time in cancer. A lot of people coming to help out, Darren. Helping they, they, they just yeah. want to come and help. That's Helping. This is good. <laughs> we finally get rid of AFL and we get more medical research. I'm been, seeing win win. There's been uh something like two thousand preprints published on with with on the subject of COVID-19 in, in what, three months, four months. And Is that a lot? Yeah, it's a huge amount. It's a ridiculous amount. And you can't, you just can't stay on top of that. And a lot of it's spurious. You know, every scientist on the planet has got their big hammer of their favourite thing and they've suddenly found COVID as the big nail that they want to go and hit with it. <laughs> so this is, this is what this podcast turned into as well. I mean, when Will's telling the story, obviously I, I avoid it. I yeah. avoid COVID because I don't think it's real. It's I, just a conspiracy, <laughs> so I don't have to go into the office. Well, we will come to that in a little bit. <laughs> I'm right? <laughs> yes, you are right. Yes, yes. It's all when you're in, in the echelons mind. of the cult. It's all in our minds and our bodies and other people's bodies. Uh, yeah. So actually, uh, this this um, it's interesting looking at the variety of different people that are pushing the it's a Chinese um, Chinese virus. As you can guess, there's a whole lot of people that hate China um, uh, that are like oh, oh, names. Uh, 
Yeah, exactly. Um, so there's a whole lot of people that are might be associated with, say, uh, the One American Network or uh, right, the, the far right world, the alt right. Um, Steve Bannon um, has been involved in this. Um, so noted virologist. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, somebody, notably virulent, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Civilizational historian and virologist, <laughs> and two shirt wearer. Uh, so, but but there's also why isn't that caught on? Two shirts. Yeah, how come? I did for a while, man. Every, I was all over every that. Every other day, yeah. I, I look at my shirts and I think I could wear two, but <laughs> it, just, it just never. Yeah, I, I got this one. I got this one. Why not do both? <laughs> I once owned a polo shirt that had two collars. No, Darren. No, yes. yeah. I never wore it, but I owned it. So, so you have one up it. and one down. You can yes, be part mate. preppy and part. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? I was, IT support guy. I was it's coming like back. The, I was coming like back. It's like the mullet of the polo shirt world. Oh, hell yeah. I was coming back from, I don't know where, but I was in Singapore airport and changing, changing gates. Um, and we're waiting for the last flight back, um, coming into it, coming into Sydney or something like that. And there's this guy sitting uh, in the chairs opposite me, unzip, unzips his travel case. And I swear to God. I thought that was, was going elsewhere. There was, <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there was two items in there, like multiple times. It was half full of pink, um, pink polo shirts. And the other side was all um, cartons of Winnie Blues. And I'm like, you, you, yeah. you, you aren't real. You, you aren't real. This can't be right. <laughs> Anything to declare? I don't want to. A lot of pink polos. <laughs> you, you're going to laugh at me. <laughs> It's not illegal. I just feel dumb. <laughs> I don't know what the limit is on pink polos, though. So maybe Nine. there should be one. There should Nine. be one. Nine. Nine's enough. You, as soon as you need more than ten, uh, not, uh, ten fingers or more, too many. No limit on Winnie Blues, though. <laughs> oh, for our international listeners, that's Winfield Blues. They are a cigarette. So where was that? Um, yeah. So obviously, a whole bunch of people on the alt right have been pushing this. It's made in a Chinese lab, but it's actually a whole bunch of people in China have been pushing this as well. Uh, so Chinese dissidents in different parts of the world um, have been have been saying this is um, an effort to control the population more more than they were before Already? or yeah. or potentially for population control. So there's this guy called um, Guo Wen Wengui. Um, who's a, an exiled Chinese billionaire, which I love exiled billionaires. They're, they're, exiled billionaires. As, as a category of people, I know I know Putin's got a bunch of exiled billionaires, but there must be a bunch from China as well. Oh, uh, that's great. I think actually- I, I want to come to your country. What do you got? What billion keeps dollars? the no property market going? Yeah, I'm exiled sure. Chinese billionaires? I, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure it is. <laughs> well, actually, I think the difference is that Putin- um, uh, there's the the exiled billionaires from Russia that seem to be able to keep their money. I don't think the exiles from China are able to keep their money very well. Somehow, then you're not a billionaire. Somehow, yeah. I'm an exiled Chinese billionaire. So, Where's your money? I don't have it anymore. Uh -huh. The Sydney equivalent of that, or the Australian equivalent of that, is the colourful racing identity. Yes. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm sure that Steve Bannon would be a colourful racing identity. Absolutely if, colourful. If he had grown identity. up in Australia. It's fair to say that on many occasions in the time I've known Will when he's turned up to certain events, he has been thus described <laughs> because of his flamboyant dress. It's an aspiration. Yeah. It is definitely an aspiration. Yeah. Anyway, with my speech and drama haircut, what, what else can I do? I've got no problem with your haircut. I have. No, no, it's the speech Good. and drama haircut. I've got a problem haircut. with both your haircuts. <laughs> I see oh, what you're saying. It's all right. It's all right. Sometimes you've got to cut hair. I know you don't know what that is. Change the subject. <laughs> Um, there's a, there's a tweak on this version. Boldness, more virile. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> there's a tweak on this version um, that he's saying it wasn't necessarily from a Chinese lab. It was stolen from a Canadian lab. Um, so there was a oh, husband. Those Canadians, those are the sleeper agents. You never think of them. Yeah, ex I know. The world's true bastards. A husband and wife Chinese spy team were recently removed from a level four infectious disease facility in Canada for se sending pathogens to the Wuhan facility. The husband specialised in coronavirus research. So. Um, no, it's too neat. So, so there's a lot of people pushing that. Um, there's also, as you can imagine, a lot of people claiming that Bill Gates or George Soros um, financed it. So there's a George uh, Soros must actually be a trillionaire because the number of things he apparently finances. I know he can't have any money. Impressive, right? impressive. A lot of this stuff, and a lot of this stuff comes from anti-vaxxer type tropes as well, right? There, what? Yeah. It's no, just, yeah, no. it's hard to believe, isn't no, it? No, you can't say there's an overlap between these people. It's hard to believe. And you, oh. like, you know, you've seen the other head. one. You've seen the other one that uh, came reputably through, I think I saw it through Vox of the overlap between people who are climate deniers and think that the uh, coronavirus is all about, you know, controlling the population and they want to take our guns is fairly high. That's more a circle. I'm going to go with, Venn yeah, diagram, it, right? it's yeah. a circle. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Venn diagrams have circles? Yeah. 
There's a little sliver, maybe, <laughs> on the edges edge. where they don't. Yeah, they don't quite overlap. We'll call it ninety nine point six. So this is uh, this is a tweet from uh, Joanne Wright for Congress. Uh, the coronavirus was man made. Bill Gates is one of the financiers of the Wujan. Wujan. We, uh, That's like a rap group. Wujan. <laughs> Wujan. She thinks it's Mexican. Wuhan. <laughs> Okay, go Wuhan, man. She's, she's, every time she's already interrupts, but I'm going with Joanne wrong for Congress already. Ah, <laughs> nice, Daz. Uh, Our jokes Sunday morning, I suppose. For <laughs> where it was being delivered, I wouldn't put it past them, and by them, I mean everyone from Adam Schiff to George Soros, Hillary Clinton, and the Pope. Hash, de- hash deep oh. state cabal. Hash CAG 2020 at CIA. She just thought she'd tag. She it, forgot yeah. the Rothschilds, the Gettys, and what was it from, sorry, Married Next Murder, that Colonel Bloody Sanders who puts a secret formula <laughs> secret in his chicken spices. that makes you crave it fortnightly. Uh, fortnightly. Fortnightly. So just to clarify here, um, recent research um, – from reputable people published in Nature Medicine just recently says all analyses clearly show that SARS-CoV-2, uh, which is the co- the tell me tell me virus. the science relationship between it's the bit that goes into SARS-CoV-2 is the virus, yeah. COVID nineteen is the disease. Yeah, right. Uh, oh, and and humanity is the cure. It's it's something. It's, we're all the virus. I think it's oh, a, it's a virus. disease that's so cool it needs three names. It's it's that's, it's like if you're in in. What a, what a triumph of scientific communication that is. Isn't it? <laughs> and, and then when people allowed. bother to get angry about it too, no, no, I think you'll find that's not the disease, that's the virus. Like, fuck off. I don't care. <laughs> well, right now, my grandma's sick. It happened with HIV. The French wanted to call it one thing and the Americans wanted to call it another and there was this huge, you know, massive argument about it. Do you right. think Pluto's a planet? What did the French want to call it? Oh, HTLV something or other. Oh, I thought it would be like uh, La, la Boule de Croix or something <laughs> no, like no, that. No, no, they want to call it the English curse. <laughs> The, hey, the German interesting, shit. Interesting side. The guy that it basically is credited with inventing PCR, which is what we test COVID with, right? This test for genetic material. Kerry Mullis, who died a few months ago, actually, um, was a HIV AIDS denier. Won the Nobel Prize for inventing the test that we all use for detecting viruses. And denied it. Denied the existence of a link between HIV and AIDS. Man. So go, go figure. How can you really be that far up and still deny things? He, like? I mean, I, I get it. He took a lot of psychoactive... Uh, substances in his life. Yeah, but that's, that doesn't well, who make... didn't? We're still coherent. <laughs> I mean, they're still coherent. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's go now with the fake cures that have been spreading all over the place, um, some of which uh, I, I tried to categorise. Just before we do that, though, yeah? I, I don't know why people give a shit where it came from in a lot of – well, I mean general people, not people trying to harness it, smash it, whatever, but like on the whole, well, it came from China. Okay. Actually, someone man-made it. Uh, okay. I think it, it kind of it doesn't know. change what day to day life has to be yeah. in order to combat it. Makes no difference to the response, right? Yeah, it's like, all right. I mean, if it gives you something to do while you're sitting at home in lockdown and you know porn hubs run out. Well, it depends. I mean, if, 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 if you're belie- if, you, if you're believing it's um, natural, then sure, you're like, okay, it's got to come from somewhere, and mm. and potentially you could say, okay, um, maybe we shouldn't eat exotic animals, maybe so much or something like that, or you can be a little bit racist about where it came from or something like that. But if you're saying it's man-made, then it's like that that brings in a whole bunch of different things. That's like we got to go to war and stuff like that. Well, so, and if you're Donald Trump, it you can use it to deflect attention from the fact that you totally fucked up the response to it, and you can just it's someone that. else's fault. That's and that's why that's why that's been yeah, pushed. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, and there's a Trump's doing. but there's a whole bunch of stuff that still comes from um, well, it's it's down into the academic circles now, but finding out where the, <coughs> uh, spa- the up Spanish into flu. the academic circles, yeah, up, up, into up, circle, up into the please. academic circles, but where yeah. the Spanish flu originally came from, and there's still a huge fight about that from. Uh, well, for different sources looking at different sorts of things, either it evolved in um, in the camps in World War One in France, or it came yeah. in America, or it was via China or something like that. And sure, there I'm sure there's virologists that are like it'd be good to know, but and there's still people trying to figure out why that particular flu was so nasty. There's lots of interesting ideas about that, but I don't think anyone's really settled on this is the reason that particular strain of flu was so mm. bad. It's still it's brawling over that. hundred years. Hundred years. Are there later. active versions of it in labs? Uh, there, yeah, there would be. I don't want to scare anybody, but I'm sure there would be somewhere. Of course there would be, surely. Yeah. I mean, you've yeah. got to study that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. 
Oh, there's a story. There's a story. I'm, I, I'm going to do a story for you in a. Oh, I'll probably do it sometime soon because I'm I'm so stuck on viruses and and deadly pandemics at the moment, Rod. I'm just going to force you to listen to it, but it involves a particular. I don't mind. I don't mind being the relief. I'll talk about people crapping in their hands, and you talk about viruses. <laughs> it's fine. We but, balance it. But there is a particularly bad disease that maybe we have, uh, let's say, got past as a globe. Um, that there are some um, samples Acne? of which. So, acne. Yeah, it's acne. It's acne. Yeah. Um, acne being the disease that we cured. No, there's some samples of this particularly bad disease that we cured that are stored in places that they really shouldn't be. Um, I'll tell you that I story. know the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, anyway, anyway, that's for another time. That's, that's nothing Ooh. to do with SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. Um, okay, so here's, here's where I want to go. I want to go to the baddies now, people that are um, – mm. Spreading fake cures, but uh, the charlatans that are working to make money off this stuff. So um, all of them. That's going to take a while. It's yeah, going to be no, very it's, long. Look, it's, I, take, it's taken them a few weeks, but they finally ramped it up and figured out how to do it. I know they, I know. they were quiet for a while, and now it's like, aha, we've got this. Actually, just to just to just to go back on this though, there, there's a study that I'll come to towards the end that that actually started to um, diagnose the misinformation to try and work out how much was um, how much was people doing this for different sorts of purposes and stuff like that. Only a very small amount of the of the misinformation content, and it seems to be maybe seven percent of the misinformation content is actually related with people trying to make money off it. So a lot of people are doing this for other sorts of purposes, or maybe they're just passing it on because they think it's real. Um, so it's it's not charlatans so much, but it is a little bit. Well, you're, you're the psychologist, but a lot surely a lot of it is I'm people not. feeling like they're smarter than other people, and that helps them deal with this chaos and. No, it's cool because everyone is smarter than everyone else. So yes, we are. On average, we're all smarter. Yeah. yeah. And better drivers. The world go around. Uh, and you want to help. I mean, everyone wants to help. Yeah. If, if you've got the inside juice on a scoop that'll stop you from from every, all of your friends from getting the COVID. The then, inside juice on a scoop. Yeah, exactly. I've got the inside juice on a scoop. Forward, forward, forward from a friend. Here, all you need to do is drink lemon juice bleach. You've got to drink the lemon-flavoured bleach. They put it in your eyes. You just spray it in your eyes, yeah. yeah. And then you inhale the hydrogen peroxide, apparently. Okay. Pastor Jim Baker. Also uh, good for acne. <laughs> Jim Baker, Jim Backer. He's the pioneer of Christian television. He's a telev- televangelist who became famous in the 70s. And if you were going to draw a picture of Satan in human skin, it would be that guy. <laughs> well, I was going to say that he fell from grace after a fraud conviction and a sex scandal no. and spent uh, five years in prison. Um, but but he's back. He's He's been I back on TV for a while. Believe. I know, right? It's weird. It's weird. well, you know, redemption, redemption. Sure, so back is back. Sure, I was, I was a baddie, but now, now I'm helping out again. So now I truly yes. understand sin because I have seen it from the inside, and I'm here to leave your hearts of it. So his That's his disturbing. solution is the silver solution or colloidal. Oh, colloidal silver. <laughs> colloidal silver. What does colloidal mean? It sounds like you. you it means it's, it's. It gastric. means it's. Um. It's in. It's kind of in suspension in a solution, but it's not dissolved in the solution. Oh, it's drinkable so lumps of silver in water. It turns you blue. Have you seen pictures of people that have drunk colloidal silver? Uh, in a good way or a bad way, blue? In a, like you look like a Smurf, blue. Oh, so that's what the Smurf Festival is all about. It's wild gear. Yeah, it's really wild. Is but it, it's literally, is, so it's flecks of silver in up liquid. Yeah. Is it a treatment Ooh. for anything? Uh, not that I'm aware of. For not but being I, blue. I, I'm happy to be corrected on that, <laughs> but not that I'm aware of. <laughs> Um, but they are making money off that, or they're trying to make money off that. I think they're selling their colloidal silver um, for forty dollars a. Um, uh, yeah, it might be forty nine ninety nine. I've seen some of the ads, and they're quite spectacular. And and seriously, though, that guy is Satan in human skin. Like he looks through the camera, and you can feel him hurting you. But he has yeah, been. He's, he's been a little bit honest. Yeah. He say, "Well, let's say it hasn't been tested on this strain of the coronavirus, but it's been tested on <laughs> other, other strains of the coronavirus, and has been able to eliminate it within twelve hours. Totally eliminate it, kills it, deactivates it. So uh, that bit might be false, but at least he's saying we no, have no, no, we haven't tested you on say, this one. You take you take the sample, you put it in a dish, you suspend your silver in I don't know bleach. Yeah, you you pour it on the virus. I'm, I'm no biologist, but I'm guessing that would kill it. Yeah. Oh, as as many people have said, uh, you can you could pour coronavirus into a fire and the fire would kill it, but that's not going to be a medicine because you know, I'm hearing you eat fire, eat fire. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I tweeted a picture the other day of my garden shed chemical collection of a list of examples of things that would kill a virus in a test tube. Yeah, no doubt, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is very irresponsible, Darren. I know, I know. 
I felt bad afterwards. So the Canadian website... Uh, Vi- Please hit pause. I've got to go to the shed and get some cues. I'll be back. The Canadian website Vivify Holistic Clinic oh, um, has recommended bone set tea, uh, saying you've got to drink bone set tea six times a day to get rid of, the, of a coronavirus infection. Um, bone seti. What is bone set tea? I've never even bone, heard of it. Did, uh, do you know it, Rod? Is it bone seti or bone set? No, no, no. I, I don't know what it is. I assume you drink tea out of a human skull. <laughs> That would be so much. Is better. that what Pete was drinking out of the bowl? Is that? Is that, is that bone set tea? He would drink bone set tea. He's got the bone broth tea. Um, but this is the Canadian company. I, don't, I yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is. I, I really got to know. Yeah, I'm going to have to find out. All right, we'll Google that. Google that one in a bit. Uh, essential oils, of course. Uh, How um, much do you have to drink? Liters. Oh God, don't do that. So gu- Can we gu- just put a general sort of. Don't, don't do, do these this. things. Yeah, of course. Okay. This is a don't do this podcast. This he is- said at the beginning, these these are the these are the shit. Yeah. Like he said, now we're going to look at the the. What did, I think your technical term was horse shit. I did. I said horse shit. Yeah. Uh, Guru yeah. Guru Nanda um, has used Facebook and Twitter to promote essential oils like tea tree and eucalyptus for coronavirus. And you could the the good thing here is you can put Corona as a discount code in its products when you're buying something. So see caring about people. <laughs> I love that one. Fuck, that's tacky. Uh, That's impressive. Do they they offer suggestions about, you know, how much you have to drink? I don't see the suggestions on that. I I think the more the better. The more you drink, the more cured you get. Oh, good call. That's how biology works. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, That's why my bedroom is is pure oxygen. When I sleep at night, just oxygen in the room. Well played, Michael Jackson. Yeah, Yeah, that's how I roll. Uh, could be Michael Jackson. Obviously, you can imagine that QAnon, uh, the online community uh, that is strong in the alt right, has been uh, not helping the scenario here. Um, so, Q- or helping? Uh, no, not helping. Mostly not, not helping. He- mostly not helping. helping. Um, so, QAnon has been um, some community influences in there have promoting their miracle mineral supplement. So, this is a toxic product. Um, it's sold cool. by the, the Texas based Genesis 2 Church of Health and Healing. For, Genocide? Uh, no, Genesis 2. Like, you oh. know, Genesis, the, the, like we're going to. The band. Yeah, like the band. Um, are you ready for Phil this? Phil Collins. I've been, yeah. I've been looking while we've been talking and I found a picture of the dude who took colloidal silver. Are you ready for this? Oh, go, yes. yes. Oh, I've seen that guy. Whoa, whoa. That That's is what a, it does to you. you in, in his, he's wearing a blue shirt. So he picks up he the blues. Is. True, and the Sets background is well. eyes. <laughs> Does it go away if you stop? I hope so. Well, eventually your skin will, you know, fall off. Like it'll mm. flake off naturally. Mm. Exfoliation and such. He seemed well but, enough to be able to sit up, though. He did, yeah. He looked, you know. I, I'm, no, I'm you could see the straps under his armpits. He was being held up for sure. I'm normally thinking if someone is that blue looking, they are in hospital about to die. So That's no, never a good sign, generally speaking, if you go that colour. Yeah. <sighs> That's Good. great. I'll, I'll bear that in mind. Uh, yeah. So back to the genocide sorry, church of something sorry, or other. Yeah. yeah, no, they, they've they've been pushing um, the miracle mineral supplement, um, which the US FDA, Food and Drug Administration, has previously issued a warning about um, uh, and says potentially life-threatening side effects of the supplement. So don't I'm going to e- execute here a blanket warning. If the word miracle appears in the product's name, yep. run the other way screaming. That's no, it. No, 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 no. I'm sure all of the medicines um, that Darren would, would ask people to suggest uh, um, use the miracle. word miracle. And yeah. Along with the word truth. If you see the word truth, you oh. know it's the truth. Yep, that's true. Fact. Yep. Fact. Uh, the miracle fact truth cure for... Yep. Yep. Okay, heaps of vitamins. Lots of people pushing vitamins, uh, zinc, anything like that. Um, air purifiers. Um, not to treat you, but to, to get the virus out of your air. So. Oh. That definitely works. Yeah. I normally wear one on my head when I'm walking around the house, one of those Dyson fans that we got for the bushfires because it looks like an a- a antenna as well. <laughs> Keeps things interesting. Yeah, I don't know. What's the – what's the Keeps the radiation um, out as so well. So the problem problem yeah. is the virus is too small. That's that's the problem. The virus is too small to be picked up by the air purifier, but I don't know if that actually do. But, of course, the, the king of the charlatans um, – there's, Whoa, big title. Yeah, that is a massive call. Yeah, it, it, look, okay. In fairness, it probably is not true. I think they're, they're, <laughs> at least a member of the royal family. Unless maybe. unless my next sentence is going to be Donald Trump, then they're probably not yeah. the king of the charlatans. Uh, I think, well, 
one of those who is quite charlatanous about their approach to this is uh, Pete Evans with his Biocharger NG, which really, really, more than anything I've ever seen, looks like a prop from um, Doctor Who. Like it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or Battlestar Galactica original series. No, no, series. It, looks, it looks like the flux capacitor out of the DeLorean. In- oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, totally, totally. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the Biocharger NG, it's a hybrid subtle energy revitalization platform that works to optimize your health, wellness, and athletic performance. Oh. So you put well, it on. be handy next year when the Olympics you, come you, back. you put it on in the lounge room and, um, and it makes. So he's the guy who's spent years telling everyone to avoid you know, electromagnetic radiation because it yeah. fries your brain and he's now selling a machine that apparently it's just a giant static electricity generator, right? No, 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 but this one's op- this lights. is optimizing. Oh, it's optimi- and it's optimizing. balanced, right? So it's gentle. It's balanced and optimizing. It is also it is also fifteen thousand dollars, which is US dollars. <laughs> this, but, but it's almost this is how you know it works. Like right. if it was a hundred bucks it'd be like dodgy. Fifteen grand, fuck yeah. Is if I've got to test? sell a kidney to buy it, it's got to be good for me. It's going to have an effect. I want to know how many he sold. But I need that must be know. a test. It's like it's a cult test. What's your What's your true allegiance to the cult? You will buy the ridiculous stuff. And if you're, you know, Scientology, if you're not going to be level 10, then, you you know, you're not going to buy this stuff. So you've got to no, step no up. No one talks about level 10, man. Or whatever it is. I don't know the levels. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Where you, but but to demonstrate your true membership of the cult status, you've got to level up, buy the, buy the good stuff. It's true though, because your commitment. It, it, well, I suppose it makes the placebo stronger. I want to know what happens if you strap the Peter Brock energy polarizer thing from the cars onto the bioenergy. What is I mean, that? Do you, do you achieve nuclear fusion if you oh, do that? Sure, you do. You, know, you don't know about the Peter really Brock polar, polarizer? No, I don't. Uh, Peter a- Brock, you know, the famous car racer, was selling these little things that you. He sounds like a, your- he would have been a Brocky, wouldn't he? Brock? Brocky? That was Brocky. Brocky. That was there Brocky. Yeah. He's no yeah. longer with us, unfortunately. Well, people um, die. And he was for a while selling this little thing, this little like box called an energy polarizer that you stuck on the in- inside of your car. <laughs> and it apparently saved you a lot of fuel by polarizing the energy through the car. Serious. Yeah. So I want I to strap one. I, I want to get a bioenergy machine from Pete and strap a Pete. Oh, there's something in the word Peter maybe here. Strap a, a energy polarizer onto it. And I reckon we can get cold. I fuel. think that's dangerous though. I think that's dangerous. These, these devices are both very powerful, Daz. I think, I think if, if you get the waveforms to synchronize, you, you, this is exactly. out of control. You can't do that, man. That's too much. It's too much. You kill us all with that kind of attitude, that cavalier approach to science, man. It's like when they started up the, uh, you know, the, the giant, particle accelerator in CERN, everyone thought it was going to open up a wormhole, right? Not, not everyone. Every, not, everyone. not everyone. A couple <laughs> of people didn't. Where well, there's like three people who said, no, it'll be, it'll be fine. <laughs> All right. Those are those are the sharks. No, but he's a shithead though. Like, he's an absolute shithead, that guy. And the only reason I, I don't think he should be actually put in a bag and beaten is because I think he's a little yeah. broken in the noggin. Yeah, yeah, I think there might be some of that going on. It's a shame because he was a good chef. I used to go to his restaurant and it was bloody good food. He should and have you stuck look well. To, you do look well. And he should have stuck to what he knew best. Yeah. Then they put him on television. Warning stuff. They put him on television and he went beyond. Yeah, but I don't stare at the sunrise every morning, mate. Breathe area. You know, you know what's bad though? I haven't found anyone. There are some sun cures I'll come to in a sec. But you remember there was a, a big thing about two months ago where people were getting, um, uh, you got to get the sun on your anus right, right down on the dot. Um, yeah. So you put your legs up in the air. These, these are my yep. legs. And you point your... Your, your bum hole towards yep. the sun. I haven't seen anyone saying that's a good cure for the coronavirus, sadly. Who's, um, who's your anus? Uh, your, <laughs> a, your anus. Your... Oh, bum. Yeah. There's, so... a, there's an interesting uh, cohort study to do in about 20 years' time when they all end up with anal melanoma. Oh, anal. <laughs> interesting. That's an interesting way to describe anal melanoma. All right. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going around that's yeah, not... We had date surgery. It's not pleasant. Carry on. Will. Not right. charlatans. Uh, well, no, it is charlatans, but they're not pushing, it's <laughs> not pushing it to make money. I don't think. Um, so one of the big ones, big bits of misinformation is heat. Um, so for a, l- a lot of people are saying that um, if the virus is exposed to temperatures of 26, 27 degrees Celsius, then mm. it'll be killed. I don't know if that would happen in a lab or not. I assume it probably takes a bit Yeah, more. a lot of that stuff's been in the lab. You know, you do yeah. stuff to a virus in a lab. It, it, like you heat it up, it will die. Well, sorry, yeah. you can't kill a virus because it's not alive. But yeah, you get it warmer, it's not active anymore. So... But a lot of people have said, okay, based on that, if you um, blow hot air from a hairdryer up your nose, um, then that's going to kill it. Uh, that's why it, I don't have it yet. I do that anyway. It, it might. <laughs> How do you think I get my nose to look like I think this? you have to blow the hot air all the way into your lungs. It's got to be some real mm. powerful hot air that's mm. got to um, – so the WHO has, def- 
definitely put out a lot of guidances saying don't Q Pete Evans' new uh, hair dry nasal attachment <laughs> to the bioenergy. Bio it's polarized. It's got to be polarized hot air. It does have, and I saw a great photo though. They're trying to demonstrate. Someone tweeted it showing this is how deep the probe has to go to check you for coronavirus. Oh, yeah. It's not pretty. Yeah, and they got the side on view of this thing going in through your noggin and basically touching your brain and then curling up and touching more of your brain. Yeah. That's what you need for your um, hair dryer component. Yeah. It's got to touch your brain and then blow the air in. Uh, a lot of people then also saying drink a lot of hot water throughout the day. Uh, make sure you get a lot of good sun, um, which is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As opposed to bad sun. Yep. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's important to get the right kind of sun. Um, yeah. So a YouTube video by futurologist uh, Dan Lee Dimke, or da- Dan Lee, what, a, f- a YouTube futurologist? Yes. <laughs> Come on. So this has been viewed nearly half a million times, saying that um, go and have a sauna, sitting in a sauna will kill the coronavirus, or he said inhaling the hot air from the hairdryer. Breathing deeply for just a few minutes in any of these hot locations will kill a high percentage of any coronavirus that happens to be invading the upper respiratory system. And a second or third exposure about an hour apart will kill the rest. So uh, he, he was recommending cool. initially go and well, see. That's an interesting you, theory. You know, there's something to test there. You could do that experiment. It, it, totally testable. Totally testable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, first you have to be confirmed as having it. Don't having you? what? C19. Sorry. Coronavirus. Sorry. Yeah. SARS Corona 2. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, you, but- could do, you could easily test that. And there, there is biological plausibility. That's on, the, that's on the less crazy end of the spectrum. Oh, what? Darren. Sorry. I hate to say that's, you know. But I did like this guy. His his in in terms of his charlatan credentials, he claims to have a. He's not. A, he's not. A, he, he claims to be a doc. Well, no, this this is the one I love. This is this the school of chicanery and <laughs> hand waggling. It's a wonderful university. Uh, he he claim he's he claim, calls himself Doctor Dan Lee Dimke. Uh, he's not a medical doctor, um, but he claims to have a doctoral de- degree from Southwest University. Fine, and a master's degree in uh, business administration. Again, fine, not a problem. But his biography lists a number of unusual skills including jet helicopter pilot which i'm just like that's that's cool those things jet helicopter <laughs> yeah <laughs> what is that is that like the helicopter blades all have a jet engine on them i don't know i don't know but it's it's because that i want to see all right um a lot of people have been pushing this um and in in parts of the world so people politicians have been pushing it parts of the world including america where the Okeechobee County Commissioner Bryant Culpepper um, has has suggested to everyone what you need to do is get the hairdryer and blow it up your nose. Um, and he saw it on a reliable source, the One American News Network, which is oh, good. Fox. But can I can I counter the the biological plausibility of the sauna theory, the hot air theory? People in Sweden like to have lots of saunas, and Sweden's mm. not exactly dealing with uh, coronavirus yes. particularly mm. well. Finland do more saunas though. That's true. There's, there's, I was talking to, I was talking Damn to um, someone um, <laughs> near us who was doing a, a study, trying to do a study on the effects of saunas on nothing to do with coronavirus, but on on longevity and all sorts of different. A lot of evidence that saunas are really awesome for you. But what they wanted to do is test um, test saunas in Finland, and they had the you know the the scale that said how often do you have a sauna? Is it is it daily? Every couple of days? Weekly? Monthly? Whatever? And they couldn't find anyone. Anyone in all of Finland that was less than, less than weekly, it was just that they, they had to go to another country to find anyone that didn't sauna enough for a com, uh, comparison population. And how do you how do you separate the sort of comorbidities of doing it naked and beating yourself with a birch branch when you get out and all that? I mean, there's so many different ways of doing it, you know. Yeah, that's a lot of groups. You can need, you can need a big cohort. Well, this There's sounds right. like a lot of nude for science. So exactly. Exactly, get your gear off. And the also side. self-flagellation for science, which you know. Eh, I don't mind it. any of that, but I fucking hate saunas. I feel like I'm being tortured, and I'm going to die. I get in one of those, and I'm like, this is not pleasant. Have you done the one, where, the proper one, where you then dive into ice cold water afterwards, or roll around in the snow? No, no, no. I'll do it in um, in um, spas and stuff like hot springs, but a sauna environment where I'm actually breathing in the surface of mercury, I'm not a fan. <laughs> Look, saunas are awesome. I love saunas, but but people have obvi- obviously said in reverse that uh, a reverse sauna, no, re- reverse of the hot 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 problem oh. is you've got to stay buy a chest freezer and sit in it for an hour. No, 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 don't, don't be be careful. Stay away from ice cream and cold food because that will um, promote coronavirus. Really? So, yes. Holy, well, we've got problems in this household. We eat a lot of ice cream. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, and you don't have C nineteen, so not that I'm aware of. Yeah, you seem well. So, yeah, I feel fine. Another another theory is that stomach acid again will kill the coronavirus. Which probably how much do you have to drink? Probably in a lab. I assumed as that this is true. You put some uh, coronavirus yes. in acid, it will kill it. 
Yeah, pretty much. Cool. So their theory yeah. is you just got to drink lots and lots of water all day. You just got to keep sipping water all the day and it flushes your respiratory tract. Dilute your stomach acid will and make that better. If we got to alkaline water, this is this is leading into drinking alkaline water, oh, right? I haven't Sorry. got alkaline, alkaline water. water. Tell me about the alkaline water. Alkaline water? Well, you haven't heard about alkaline diets? No, I know about yeah. alkaline diets. Yeah, but... well, you, you've got to drink alkaline water, mate. That's, you know... <laughs> Better than real water. Back to Pete Evans. Um, yeah. No, uh, I'm going to raw water, man. I just basically open up the toilet and go for it. Nice raw water. Yeah. Whole yeah. bunch well, of you won't, you won't get an autoimmune disease of some sort. But well, if you've already got one, can you get another one though? Probably not. Cool. No, I don't have one yet. All right. Whole no, bunch the raw of raw water from the toilet bowl. Seriously, man, you, you, it's not even expensive. That's not raw water. <laughs> it's pretty fucking raw. It's pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> Concentrated, super raw water. <laughs> uh, a bunch of other pantry ingredients uh, that could cure the coronavirus. Lemons, uh, garlic, bananas, vitamins, bleach, uh, hydrogen peroxide. So, Why are you keeping bleach in your pantry? Well, you got to keep it somewhere. That's where food goes. Um, so Jordan Sather, a YouTuber aligned with the pro-Trump QAnon conspiracy theory, has told followers that coronavirus is a new fad disease, which was released as planned, and he's promoted the idea that drinking bleach will um, will cure it. So I it don't will. know. It will. Because it will. Yeah. The virus can't he, survive. And, and here's the thing. You know, some of these bits of misinformation, I don't know how we disentangle whether he's being – he's making a joke or he's being – he's hoping someone will follow because he's an asshole and he wants to – It's not people. a great joke. He, I've got a joke for you. I've got a joke for you. Drink bleach to cure corona. But um, ching. Like, that's well, – it's not winning. hilarious. Winning. Wait, hashtag drink yeah. bleach. Mm, hashtag winning. But I'm still back to the whole – so the thing that was poisonous before corona – now isn't. Yeah. I look, you know, all no, these people have in common. Just, just a little bit. Just, just shots. All you need is just a little bit. Enough to kill the, the small things in your body, but not the big body. You know, so not we're cold. big. That's you know, the therapeutic index. I mean, that's yeah. how we do it, you know. Uh, and look, it's so not like homeop- medicine doesn't rely on that. Homeopathic bleach. Homeopathic bleach. There you go. That's the Guar- truth. Guaranteed there are Boom. some people doing Wholesome that. Wholesome show, homeopathic bleach coming to a charlatan near you. We'll do get it. Some, get some labels. Let's sell this stuff. Obviously. It's done. Obviously, one of the biggest bits of um, misinformation going around is something pushed very much by Donald Trump is the anti-malarial medication hydroxychloroquine. Yep. Um, so it has been pushed very much by Trump, been pushed by other people, including um, Clive Palmer here in Australia. Um, Thanks, Clive. Uh, Trump has called it, obviously, oh, one of the biggest game changers in the history of medicine. So, cool. well, if anyone's going to know, what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Take it. Um, his the cardiac rhythm. <laughs> there you go. That's something you have to lose for a start. <laughs> yeah, it's not low on side effects, is it? Uh, no, it's a nasty mm. bloody thing. It's horrible. And there doesn't seem to be actually very much evidence that this is useful against. It's um, not, COVID. it's not going to be a useful drug in. COVID. I, I, Sorry. I don't know to why be fair, this though, it would started. take your mind off it, wouldn't it? Like if you're feeling really bad with COVID, it might give you a necessary or useful distraction. Well, you, you could argue that. You definitely argue that. I mean, doesn't that, I, I guess that, you know, it comes back to the old notion of drinking gin and tonic, right? Which is probably going to be a more enjoyable way of getting the same effect. Freaking delicious too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Is it 12 o'clock? It's 12 o'clock. We can have one now. Okay. <laughs> it's always 12 o'clock somewhere, mate. <laughs> bunch, of, bunch of other medical rumors going around, all sorts of different sorts of things um, that um, you can't take Nurofen. Any anti-inflammatory jugs or ibuprofen at the same time? Because some interesting science behind that one. Yeah. There is actually some interesting science behind that one. Okay. Well, all right. So yeah. yeah. So um, so you know again, don't stop taking your ibuprofen without talking to your doctor. But there is there's been a thing going around for years thinking about uh, maybe we shouldn't be suppressing people's immune response when they've got an infection, which is okay. what those kind of drugs do, right? There so, you go. You can actually learn some science from the wholesome yeah, show. As long as, as, long as, we, as, long as we bring like a, a legit science guy on. <laughs> yeah, um, and then when someone says, I heard it I heard it on this podcast, <laughs> boom, we're legitimate. Obviously, obviously a big problem is that um, a lot of people are worried their meth might be um, contaminated. Um, so well, the crystal meth yeah, or the meth yeah, laid spirits. No, yeah, the crystal meth um, might be contaminated. So there are a lot of people saying, um, make sure you go and get your meth <laughs> tested for COVID before you take your meth. Who's, who's saying that's, that? Like, that's prudent, you know. Who's saying that? They like, I really want some meth. Oh, it's a virus, Look, it, it, the it? original post was by um, the Danville uh, Police Department. 
Um, public service announcement. If you have recently purchased meth locally, it may be contaminated with the coronavirus. Please take it to the sheriff's office or police department <laughs> and they will test it for free. If well you're not, played. If you're not comfortable going into an office, please contact any officer and they'll test the, test your meth in the privacy of your home. Well <laughs> played. Is this, is so, this the police? I, I just uh, I bought all these drugs. I've also killed two people. I think I'm worried they may have had corona on you them. Do, you know them. someone would have taken that offer. It's, well, it's the wallet no. inspector or it's the free yeah. speed boats. You know, come down here. Free Speed Free speed for criminals. Right. <laughs> um, what else? Here's, here's another one. You can self-test for coronavirus by holding your breath. If you can hold your breath without comfort, without without coughing, discomfort, stiffness, or tightness, your lungs do not suffer from fibrosis, and therefore you not you don't have COVID. Stiffness. So if you hold your breath and your legs ache, you have COVID. No. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe. You're supposed I, to time yourself to see how long it takes you to pass out. Is I don't. The- I don't know how long you have to hold your breath for uh, in this one. So. <laughs> it's also tricky to hit stop. If you've passed out. It's, yeah. It's, I made like 20 minutes. You make sure you land on the button or something. <laughs> you land on the button. Set it up right, yeah. 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 Full head button, the button shut. Uh, another, one, another one spread by QAnon is that um, uh, a false theory that Asians were more susceptible to coronavirus and that white people were immune to it. Cool. Sounds like a bit of a Steve Bannon thing there as well. QAnon sound like a top bunch of people. Don't they, they really? Like really nice people. Don't it really is a very simple algorithm to generate what they're going to say, though, isn't it? You know, insert not white here as bad, white as good, job done, tick. All right. You know, the, the one, the person we haven't heard from yet who I expect we will very soon is Jordan Peterson on this. I mean, he is going oh. to come out. We, we have not heard from him yet. He's in his bunker in Russia. Surely, somewhere. surely the all beef diet keeps you. Stand up straight, mate. Clear your room, you won't get COVID. I mean, that's got to be the message. <laughs> and right? then all beef, just beef. Nothing, all beef, but, nothing, nothing else, but beef. Just and beef. that will stop the COVID. Just beef. Benzo, and benzos, allegedly. Lots of benzos and beef. Benzos and beef? Yeah. All right, I went I'll to that go- restaurant. It's in Houston. Not good. <laughs> I want to go back to um, broader things that just, just weird bits of misinformation that are going around about this whole thing. So there's a bunch of um, stories about animals that aren't necessarily true. So some of the rewilding stories, sadly. Oh, I had nothing to do with those. Sadly, are not 100% true. You know, we've seen the stories of. Um, Oh, oh yeah, we've seen a goat in London, therefore the, the yeah, exactly. Gaia has healed herself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dolphins in Venice. Dolphins or, in Venice. Or, or swans in uh, somewhere. Else. And a lot of them are just twisting of the truth. So, Has there been one from bears in Vancouver yet? Because that actually happens on a regular basis. I'm sure, it's I'm sure. But th- this one is my favourite. This one is my favourite. Um, there was a, a rumour going around on Facebook that Russia had unleashed 500 lions to keep people indoors. Um don't okay. be a lion. Use Wolverines. Wolverines are much more frightening than lions. <laughs> I don't want yeah, either of them. Lions have the visual impact. So, so here's the thing. There's Wolverines in your street or there's lions in your street. Which one are you going out? Neither. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I I, I'm, How many of each? I, I, I would actually go out if there's Wolverine because I've like I've never seen a Wolverine. I want to know what they're like. Oh, these? Yeah, no, I don't like Wolverines. <laughs> there's something creepy about those little buggers. There's also something like downright old school imperial, like we have released lions onto the streets to calm the population. I, 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 I wish they had. <laughs> Only that's the Roman Empire. That. Like, like it's that's very Roman. Roman Empire. I can imagine a time when Claudius or something like that is like, release the lions. That will solve yeah. the problem. Yeah. For the people. Yeah. It will help them. Bread. Lions. Social Darwinism in its most base form. Yeah. Okay. The coronavirus isn't going to keep you back in. What about wild animals that want to eat you? Mm. Uh, there's of course, an- it may feed a couple of conspiracy theories. They might take that the wrong way. There's another one that the Dutch Air Force is going to disinfect the entire country with helicopters. Chemtrails. Oh, chemtrails for good. Yeah. Was, yeah. Um, the Netherlands police tweeted, it's not true. <laughs> but they all smoke the reefer. Um, okay. So the big one, of course, is that the whole thing is a hoax, that all of the coronavirus is just a deep state plot. So for this, we can listen to holistic healer, Kelly Brogan. Uh, Brogan has done things for the Goop Network in the past, which I know, Darren, you're you're a huge fan of. Um, uh, That That is about making money, that one. Yeah, indeed. are you actually crying now, Daz? It's, it's like- <laughs> on the inside, mate. I'm crying on the inside. <laughs> so she has seriously. Said- well, you said goop, and I just saw him go. We're just trying to break me up. This is what this is about. Let's see how far we can push him until he just gets up and walks out. <laughs> um, where, where is this? Okay, so she's peddled a conspiracy theory that there potentially is no such thing as the coronavirus. Brogan is she's a psychiatrist and anti vaxxer. Uh, claimed the increase in deaths is instead likely to be accelerated by the fear itself. 
And oh, it's true. Yeah, we're all frightened of this thing, and that's why people are dying. Yeah. And she said it was silly to villainize the coronavirus. Yeah, one th- no, no one thinks of the virus as feelings. She's right, actually. That's a yeah, fair point. It's true. I mean, if we were nicer to it, maybe it wouldn't be so nasty back to us. And then we That's wouldn't true. be feeling scared about it. And then we could hug it. And then we'd all get, get some sort yeah. of herd immunity. Yeah. Um, she says it's promoted by um, the whole pandemic is promoted as a cover up for a power play by vaccine companies, an effort for the vaccine companies to gain. Uh, I don't know, financial power or something like that. Um, As opposed to the weak financial positions most of them are in right now. I hear this one in cancer all the time. Oh, you've got the cure. You're just keeping it secret to make money. It's like, yes, that's why I let my granddad die from the disease. And that's why my boss who worked, also worked on it died from the disease because he was that's keeping it secret. Cover, Des. That is the perfect cover. True, true. Yeah, I see the games that are going on here. <laughs> she, she has said in this post that she is liberated from the concept of germ-based contagion. Um, Wow. Which is a, a, quite an old idea in medicine, Daz, I'm sure. Uh, it's also yes. an easily and, tested premise to see if she is liberated from a, it. And a pretty successful <laughs> idea too. So That's like, you know, that's like claiming you're liberated from gravity, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, intelligent falling. Gravity. Intelligent falling. <laughs> it's the Douglas Adams school of how you fly. Just forget <laughs> to hit the ground. Yeah. Uh, she said, with this con- concept of contagion, is it possible to really step back and say, hold on a minute, you know, is this proven as a fact for me, right? Am I convinced that this is actually true? That there are little invisible pathogens, you know, that randomly jump around from person to person and have the capacity to really harm and injure and even kill. To which you can wow. I have two yeah. words for her. Yes. Microscope. <laughs> I have one word, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yours is quicker. <laughs> Well, but that was that, that was the argument with carbon dioxide, wasn't it? Tony Abbott, oh, it's weightless and invisible and you can't smell it, therefore how can it possibly be doing anything? And yeah. strangely, though, that yeah. he is quite a big fan of something that is invisible and that you can't see that uh, drives the whole universe. So mm. uh, I don't mm. know. I don't know. Gravity? <laughs> not gravity, but it does start with G. So Con- Consistency is not big in that space. Going out. Uh, She says that she has compassion for those who are stuck in the assumption around infection and contagion. Um, And yeah, so the collapse. So she's not a bitch. Like she's actually, you know, she cares about people. She's genuine in her beliefs quite often. She cares about people. Also, the collapse of the economy is being orchestrated for the reorganization in the hands of the elite. Rush Limbaugh has dived into this as well and said that the deep state has created the the coronavirus as a political (sighs) weapon to bring down Trump. Oh. Well, yeah, because he's trying so hard himself and it's still not working. So I suppose we've got to do something. But so, that's, that's impressive. I, just, I can't even, I honestly can't even get my head around that. I am close to getting up and walking out after hearing that, that someone doesn't believe in germ theory. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? It's, I... the thing, you know, the thing I find interesting about all these people, the libertarian argument for let, let's just let it rip, you know, yeah. let herd immunity take over. They always yeah. think they're not the herd that will get cut. By the virus, it's oh, like oh, well, that, well, let the, that happen to the rest of the herd, and we're not part of that. Yeah, yeah. there was a there was a preacher in in Virginia, I think, who who had said it was all baloney. Um, he died of it not long later, which is a great way to you know demonstrate. That's how it works. Karma, God's will, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's so it's yeah. God's will. Yeah, it's good way to demonstrate germ theory too. So a lot of people are a lot of people are out oh, there saying, it, okay, so is why it? is this why what, what why is this spreading? And and people are like, okay, this is social media, um, you know, they're saying, oh, this is all the problem of WhatsApp or Terminal or Facebook or Twitter. But that's I think that's missing the point. It's fucking everywhere, and it's spreading via any way that people communicate with each other. It does. We don't have to blame Facebook for this. People will find a way to get this message around. Um, you know, it, oh, it's a cop out to say that. Oh, it's because we've got more social media than ever. Therefore, no, people into conspiracies. Around. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. People suddenly believe differently because these things exist. Yeah, people are spreading it all, and and that's the thing. You know, how how then do we do we stop it, and how do we engage with it? So there's um, you know, there's studies looking out there to say, okay, how are the social media platforms engaging with it? They they've put out a joint statement um, that they're going to tackle the misinformation. So Facebook and Google and and Twitter have been working to do things. So. And to be um, fair, they, they're getting better. They are. They are. There's yeah, there's yeah. a bunch of places where they're they're taking stuff down, they're putting warnings, and they're and the algorithms aren't promoting it. But I think the thing is that people want to spread this stuff. This is also the, this that, is the that contributes to every conspiracy theorist's yeah, yeah. conspiracy perfectly. It does. Absolutely it just plays perfect. into it, doesn't it? Yeah. They're taking us down, man. They're censoring us. It's because we know too much. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so I think regardless, I think what we've got to recognize is that all of this misinformation spreads because actually deep down people care about their, their, their neighbors and their friends and they want them to survive this pandemic. And so they're spreading any information they can. And sure, they're not checking the veracity of this, but I think what they, they want to do is try and look after each other. And I think unless we can think about theories of misinformation that say, okay, these people are doing it for positive intent, not, okay, there are some people that are doing this to make money or to, to actually cause harm, but most of the people that are pushing this on are people that are doing this for positive reasons. And the only way to tackle this is okay no, <laughs> I no, but it tells you how to, how to try and counter or to, tells you where to start looking to counter it though, doesn't it? I don't, how much? How much though? Well, because just because you mean it sincerely and you're nice doesn't mean you're not subject to all the biases. Anyway, well, though. I think I think there's a whole lot of people that are saying, okay, so what do you do? What do you do to stop this? If we can have a little tri- a warning, check the accuracy of before before you do this. No, people don't check the accuracy no. of things, or. No. Um, what do you put little warnings against all information or something? This might not be true. I think we, uh, the only way we're going (laughs) to slow this down is separating the idea of, of, um, what, what we should do right now and what's going on. And we need to have discussions about what's going on, but what, what we do is simple messages, you know, stay home and, um, stay home, wash your hands, stuff like that. So that's a big part of it. That's what I was saying before, you know, why people would, to get and play into the obsession with whether it was the Chinese or aliens from Jupiter or whatever the hell. It's like, look, we, sure, we can get to that. But here's the thing, regardless of where it came from, here's look, exactly what you're saying. Here's what you ought to do. Regardless of where it came from, do the following three things. Yep. Let's do that. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, that's, I don't think we've got really any choice to do anything other than that at the moment. That's got to be the way forward, you know? I mean, it's, yep. you know, there's an immediate... There's immediacy in what's going on, you know. Lots and lots of people are getting sick and dying, and we haven't got mm. time to fuck around with all those kind of mm. ideas. And yet, could. and yet, uh, you go and look in uh, certain countries, um, and people are reopening the beaches when they haven't even hit the peak of the emergency. So I well, think look at the upside of that is that the, the effects will be quite visible soon enough. Mm, yeah, that's your social Darwinism at play right there. Yeah, great. Yeah, it's pretty horrible though. It's awful. It's horrific. Yeah, yeah. The problem is so. The only hope I think in that is whichever country does it first, other people go, shit, oops, okay, we won't. It's not great for that country, but th- that's the best I can hope out of that scenario where people Look, go, oh, you know, it's not fair. I, mm. hate, to, I hate to be nationalistic on, on this sort of question, but I think I am quite gratified that most people in Australia are, okay, let's let's do this. And this is the kind of thing where we're not... Um, not being little closet libertarians on this. I think countries where you've got these people that, that think mm. that they're right to go and do whatever it is that they want um, yeah. in the middle of a pandemic is a huge problem. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think, uh, I think our, like our community response in general has been really pretty bloody good and, mm. and it's been kind of heartening, to be honest. It's sort of like a good yeah. reminder of what, what's important, you know, and, and it really has. It's shown... Like everyone talks about the national, the, the you know, the Anzac spirit and the national character and all that sort of stuff. It turns out in a crisis, our national character is one of being pretty sensible and, and sort of thoughtful and kind to each other most of the time. Particularly where we live, Des, because we live in Canberra. You're in the bubble though, mate. And we can. You've got to get to the People's Republic of Maroubra and see how things really work. <laughs> yeah, and look, it's, it's going to happen for a while. And I get why people would be freaked out. The, the thing that scares me is when I hear stories about, you know, how do we keep our teenagers from not sneaking out at night so they can go and visit their girlfriend, boyfriend or whatever. And I'm like, I understand. If you're 15, yeah, one year is an eternity and it's a huge thing to miss out on. Or, I saw a kid with a football, he's probably 14, bouncing yeah. a, fo- a real football, not an AFL ball, like an actual sport that other people play. And he... um. He was looking at that and I thought, wow, for me, the idea of missing one season of a sport that you're into as a kid or a teenager is immense. Like the, the, the scope of that is huge to your yeah. brain at that point. Yeah, it's huge. So I understand why people are going to be wigging out. I think I think some of the really clever messaging that's been going on in the last couple of weeks, and I, you know, they really stuffed up the messaging early on, but they've got it right mm-hmm. recently, was around, look, we've all made all these massive sacrifices. Lots of people have lost their jobs. Don't stuff it up now by, by unwinding it too early. I think that's a really good... Yeah. It's a, it's a sort of a positive framing on the messaging. It's like yeah. it acknowledges that people have suffered, that people have gone through really sort of onerous things. But it's, I heard a great analogy last night. It'd be like taking off the parachute when you're a thousand feet from the ground. It's like, I don't need oh. this anymore. There you go. We're done. Yeah. We, we slowed down enough. That's <laughs> awesome, Daz. Okay. 
Thank you so much, Darren, for joining us here today to explore COVID misinformation. Thank you very much to Matt Nurse for diving out with a whole bunch of um, sources on this one. Yeah, this well has been played, the wholesome Matt. show. Did um, you say dining out with? Because I don't think that's good. Diving out with. The oh, wholesome diving. show. Um, you know, wash your hands, keep your social distance, kick your footy like long way, but don't touch it or something like that. Or bleach Yeah, it, yeah just have a bag full of them. Kick them to your friend, yeah. but don't let them come back. Yeah, don't let them come back. That's it. Um, yeah. Wholesome show is me, Will Grant. Darren Saunders. Oh, you, and me. And yeah, you, Rod. You, you. <laughs> brought to you. You want to do that again? Did I stuff that up? Cop leader. <laughs> Brought to you by the Australian National Centre for the Public Awareness of Science. And cults. If you want to join my cult, just get me on Twitter. (laughs)